What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about composability with interfaces in Golang. This is the bread and butter of the language. This is very important. Um, unfortunately, it's not being taught so much on the internet and if it's being teach, it's being teach badly. I'm going to teach you how to use this for production environment, for real life use cases. And for the people that are not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comment. And if you really want, jump into the Discord where we have 24-7 education, where I'm turning engineers into high-value software engineers. Let's get into it. So basically, uh, what's going on here? I have two screens open. Let's uh, uh, close this one real quick. So I'm going to have this use case, right? And um, we have hash and broadcast, which will take in an I.O. reader, right? It's like I said before, I'm closing the gap between simple tutorial code and real life use cases so you don't choke in your job. So it's a very common use case where you have an IO reader, right? And uh, what we're gonna do here is basically we're gonna take the hash, right? We're gonna take the hash of a reader, which is basically uh, the hash of the bytes, which are being, which we can read from the reader, right? So how a lot of people are gonna do this is basically the wrong way, right? So they're gonna say B, R, it's gonna be uh, IO till, right? They use IO till and they're gonna say read all, right? Read all. They pass in the reader here. They're gonna say uh, if the error is not nil, they will um, just return the error here, which is fine, right? Then we have the bytes here, and then we can say that the hash is basically, um, for example, SHA1 sum of the bytes, right? Like this, and then we can print out FMT println. We're gonna say hex uh, encode to string, and we're gonna say, um, the hash, right? It's not gonna work because this is gonna be, I think, a 10. Let me see what sum is doing. It returns a size, which should be 20, I think. Not quite sure. So, and to able to fix this, we just do this and we have a nice slice of bytes, right? So we're gonna uh, read everything from our reader. We're gonna hash it. And then we're gonna print out a nice string representation of the hash. And then we are going to pipe in the reader back to broadcast, right? And we are gonna do the same thing in broadcast because what we're gonna do in broadcast, I don't know, probably broadcasting it is just just for the sake of demonstration. So we're gonna read the reader once again here, and then we're gonna say FMT println, uh, let's say string of the read of the bytes, for example, and then do this and say that's a string of B, right? And then in our main function, we could say, for example, that the payload is going to be uh, bytes, and wait, we could do it like this, for example, just a simple byte. We're gonna say, um, hello, high value software engineer, like this. And then we're gonna say hash and broadcast. And of course we cannot just put in the payload because it's a byte, so we're gonna say a byte, we need a reader. So we're gonna say bytes new a reader, uh, like this, and put in the payload like that. Uh, and then we're gonna say uh, go run main.go, like this, boom. And you can see that we have a nice hash but the string of the bytes is empty and that's a problem. And now you're gonna spend the whole week trying to solve this. And if you're solving it, you're probably going to solve it in a bad way. Uh, and the reason is because we have a reader here, right? We're gonna read everything from the reader. So that basically means that uh, once we pass the reader in broadcast right here, we cannot read anymore because the reader is already being read. It's completely empty. There is no water anymore in the can, you know what I mean? So how are we gonna solve that? Is um, I'm gonna teach you how to solve it with interface composability, right? So what we could do, for example, is we could make a type, and that's gonna be a hash reader. Uh, a hash reader, which is gonna be a struct, like this, right? And it's gonna take in, um, it's gonna take in a reader. Actually, we could do it like this. We can embed the IO reader here, right? This is an interface. We can embed that into our struct. And then we're gonna say, uh, actually, not, we're gonna not, not do an IO reader. We're gonna say a bytes reader, like that. Uh, and then we're gonna say, um, we, we, we're gonna say it takes in a buffer, which is gonna be a pointer to a bytes uh, buffer like that, right? Then we're gonna say func new hash reader like this hash reader uh, that's gonna take in a bunch of bytes 
like this and it's gonna return as a pointer to that hash reader like this right we're gonna return the hash reader like this then we're gonna say that the reader right here which is basically uh, the this embedded reader right we're gonna say it's gonna be uh, a bytes new reader of b what's going on uh, I need to do it like this, I guess. That's fine. Then we're gonna say that we need a buffer, and the buffer is gonna be a bytes new buffer. We're gonna put that into this. Like that. And then we're gonna say, uh, instead of basically, um, let's give this a hash function. And we also need to give it a read function, but I think uh, that's already gonna be okay. Uh, we're gonna say, because the read function has already been implemented, right? Because we embed a bytes reader right here. So, but we need a hash function, which is gonna be, let's make it a, a small, small case. We're gonna say hash is gonna return as a string, right? And there's gonna be, of course, a func, um, Let's call it this, a hash reader, like that. And we're gonna say here, um, we're gonna say uh, return hex and code to string, and it's gonna be the hey buff bytes, like this, and we are done. <clears throat> so, how are we gonna fix this, right? So, but instead of saying that we're gonna, uh, by, we're gonna do a bytes new reader, what we're gonna do is, instead of a bytes new reader, we're gonna say uh, a new hash reader, with this payload, right? Uh, just like that. But th the problem is, um, it's gonna work all fine, right? Because hash reader, the payload is gonna it's gonna work out fine here in hash and broadcast. Because, like I mentioned before, we are composing the bytes reader, which already implements the I/O reader interface into our hash reader. So we don't need to do it. It will just work out of the bat. And you can make it even more complex. Uh, but hey. Uh, this is good for now. Just an example on how to do these things. So this hash. So what, what are you going to do? Instead of reading this, uh, instead of depleting, what we're going to do is um, say that the hash, actually what you could do um, is saying that the hash is going to be R and we're going to cast this reader to a hash reader like this. And we're going to say, we're going to call the function hash to it, right? It's going to return a hash and instead of this, because it's a string, so we don't need to do hex and code. We can just print this out and let's test it out. Boom. As you can see, we have a nice hash of uh, our string and we have the, the bytes by just a simple uh, Golang interface composability, right? But now you could say, yes, yes, Anthony, good, good, good. But I, I don't like this hash reader thing here, right? Because uh, it's nasty and you're 100% right. We're gonna fix that also by doing some uh, interface composability once again. So what we're gonna say is, uh, let's make a type and we're gonna call this a hash reader. And that's gonna be an interface, right? And what do we need for a hash reader? So very simple. The, the type itself, the type name already says what it needs to do. We're gonna say IO reader, right? We don't need to specify a read function. We're just gonna embed the IO reader interface, right? Which is basically this. It's just read a bunch of bytes and it returns how, man, how many bytes has written and an error, right? So we're gonna embed this and then we're gonna say, yo, we also want a hash function because it's a hash reader, for example. And we're just gonna return a string. Of course, in real world scenarios, you are going to return bytes or something, right? I mean, uh, you could have a, a hash reader, which could be, you could implement this in a multiple things. You could have a SHA-1 hash reader, you could do a SHA-256 hash reader, you could whatever, uh, HMAC, hey, you name it. You're the, the painter of your painting. You're the Bob Ross of programming. So you can choose whatever you want, right? Don't listen to all these fake gurus. Come to my channel and I will teach you how to make things happen, right? I will turn you into a high value software engineer. So um, yes, so instead of saying here, this hash and broadcast, instead of taking a reader, right? We could say, uh, I want uh, a hash reader, like this, right? A hash reader, and instead of uh, calling this directly here, we could say that the hash uh, is going to be our hash, right? You see, it, it can read 
uh, wait, or you can see it can, it has a hash function and it has a read function on top of it. So we're going to say hash, right? And then we don't need to specify a hash reader here in broadcast, right? You can just say IO reader because uh, in broadcast, the only thing we're going to do is read from it. We're not going to hash it, so we can just provide an I.O. reader. And that's why you have composability, because uh, for testing this, this broadcast function, the only, you only need a reader. But for testing this hash and broadcast function, you need a hash reader. So it's, it's very composable, it's very testable, maintainable. Uh, it's basically everything you need to know. It's very, very important. Uh, and let's run it again. Go run main.go. You see? And it works perfectly fine. So we have a nice way to compose interfaces, uh, even in structs and in interfaces itself, to basically make our program much more easier to maintain, to understand, and to switch things around, to compose, right? That's uh, the future of programming, much better than all these object-oriented bullshit, right? So if you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel because I'm gonna drop more of these insane videos which will make every interview, which make which will make every interviewer just sit down because you are the man if you know this shit, right? I also have a Patreon page where I'm doing uh, the craziest shit ever. I'm making a complete decentralized uh, content addressable store where I'm going to teach you everything about uh, multi multiplexing uh, TCP streams and all that stuff and how to distribute and decentralize uh, things. So if you want, take a look at my Patreon page. And uh, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in one of my live streams. Bye-bye.